Welcome to this new episode of Intelligent Machine Monitoring. Today we will not talk about a specific machine, but we will talk about a specific component that you will find in all rotating equipment. Um, today my guest is Oliver Franz and he, will, he has prepared a tutorial on fundamentals on rolling element bearing analysis. Oliver. Thank you, Jules, for the introduction and welcome to this episode. Yeah, when we talk about rolling element bearings, there are different purposes that these serve. First and foremost, they are typically used to keep a number of or single shafts in alignment and to make them rotate smooth and properly aligned. Now I've sketched up a typical rolling element bearing here on the, on the board and a lot is at stake when these bearings do fail. So starting off with a loss of alignment, which leads to a failure on gear sets, failures of your mechanical seals, failure of general alignment or even absolute catastrophic damages. So analyzing the machinery health and the health of each of those bearings is really important and in looking into those specifics it's also important to understand the different components within a bearing. So those rolling element bearings are made out of four major components. One is obviously the roller itself. Then we have a so-called outer race, we have an inner race, and then we have a cage that keeps the different rollers properly spread apart. This is called the cage. Those are the four major components within a rolling element bearing. And now there's two more things to know. The inner race is rotating at a given speed say this way, and the outer race is actually static in its position. And there is a shaft sticking through that rolling element bearing and there eventually is a resulting forces of the weight of the shaft, dynamic forces of radial or even axial forces that will result into wear of the bearing long term and these are to be detected in this case. So let's imagine you have a brand new machine with a brand new bearing installed. Consider the run of the bearing like a perfectly smooth road that you drive your car across. So you have your perfect road, you have your car, and you drive this car across that perfectly smooth road. For some reason, there is an acceleration sensor, a vibration sensor mounted on the hood of your car and you drive your car and over time you see a perfectly smooth vibration over time which is measured in G and for some reason on your driveway you develop to have a little pothole on your driveway and as you go over this pothole you will see that the first wheel will dip into the pothole creating a vibration trace and soon after you'll see a second vibration trace as this occurs. So you can very easily recognize there is a problem on your road by the tutung, tutung, by the impacting you can tell in the car and that can be measured with the acceleration sensor and the spreading between those two impacts is the so-called repetition frequency and the spacing is equal to the spacing of your two axes. Now the failure detection on a rolling element bearing is not as straightforward as your driveway detection here. There are other effects that impact the analysis. There is the different components within the rolling element bearing. There is also other equipment, other noise around the rolling element bearing that is to be diagnosed. And what is relevant here is on the car we have our acceleration sensor on the hood. On a rolling element bearing it is important that you face and place the acceleration, the vibration sensor into the load zone position. Now each of the different components within my rolling element bearing has a dedicated fault frequency. And in order to get from a time waveform data that is recorded from my acceleration sensor to useful information that is component centric, we need to incorporate the different fault frequencies. As such, there is the outer race, which has a so-called ball pass frequency outer race. There is the inner race, which comes with a ball pass frequency 
in a race. There is the rollers that come with a so-called 2BS, two ball spin frequency, and there is the cage that comes with a dedicated fundamental train frequencies. Now what are all these numbers, what do they mean? They tell us a correlation between a single turn of the shaft, the shaft inside makes a single turn, and how many rollers or how many impacts would I actually see within one of those turns of the shaft. Say, imagine you had a little pitting on your outer race. This is my little pothole on the outer race that first develops like a subsurface crack. So we have a little bit of a, of a hole here or a subsurface crack developing on the outer race. And every roller that goes over the pitting and later through a crack will drop into this little damage a little bit. And there is a BPFO number describing the number of rolling elements that go over the damage in every turn of the shaft. As an example, say we have an example here with 20 rollers in my rolling element bearing. The BPFO could be in the range, for example, of 8.1 times. The BPFO, for example, is 11.9. Two times BS may be in the range of 6.3. And the fundamental train frequency is typically in the range of 0 0.4, 0 0.41. Those are typical values for fault frequencies. Now what they do mean is that in single turn of the shaft, 8.1 rollers will go over the defined damage that is detectable in my spectral analysis that I'll explain now. For BPFI, if I had a damage on the inner race, then it's going to be 11.9 rollers making it over the damage in every turn. And the, the cage itself only turns 0.4 times in every turn. And if there is a roller fault, that would mean, say you have a crack on a roller, the roller makes contact twice, once on the inner race, once on the outer race. There is even a little bit more to this, which results out of the inner and outer race contact, plus the roller go in and out of the load zone, which we have on the bottom end where we see the highest impacting on the top side of the bearing, we see less of an impacting from a damaged roller. So that's why we see a modulation throughout that single turn of a cracked or a failed roller itself. As I mentioned, the diagnostics on a rolling element bearing is not as straightforward as it is on, the, uh, on my car example here. What we use to accommodate this fault frequency analysis is a so-called spectrum. The data above is so-called um, a time waveform. This is a, a raw data or we say time waveform data to this time domain data. And this vibration data that you see on top here contains all the vibration from the bearing but also from all other surrounding components which could be a noisy gearbox, could be a impeller of a rotating pump, could be a fan, could be the uh, driving, driving motor, and could be the flow noise of the driven equipment. So this is the overall vibration that the acceleration sensor detects on my rolling element bearing. And there is a technique that is called an, an FFT, a fast Fourier transformation that subdivides and splits apart this time waveform data into its specific frequency components that contribute to my overall raw data that I acquire from my acceleration sensor. And we use the spectrum, it's also called the spectrum, to analyze and identify potential faults in my bearing. As I initially mentioned, I start off with a brand new bearing. This is my very smooth ride, nothing is broken. So my spectrum will be fairly clean, Not, there's probably some peaks standing out. But as soon as I do recognize that I see a peak, a distinct vibration peak at my 8.1 times running speed, and this is harmonics and multiples of shaft rotation speed, my RPM, the rotation of the shaft, is equivalent to one times running speed and the fault frequencies are calibrated against. So this will be equivalent to a one time 
BPFO fault frequency. And if the failure does occur, there is a harmonic set that will become present in my spectral data. So not only will I see this vibration at 8.1 times running speed, but also at 16.2 or two times BPFO in my example. And also three, four, five, six. And it may even show up up to the 10th harmonic that is 10 times BPFO. And this would make a perfect failure if there is such a thing like a perfect fault, but this would make for a perfect detection of a ball pass frequency outer race of an outer race failure in this scenario. So this would repeat at a three times up to the 10th harmonic. From a failure detection, one would first look out for the harmonic set as it appears, and those are emergent faults. And in a second step, you would be looking out for the amplitude of those failures to increase in their magnitude. This speaks for the criticality, for the damaging energy, energy that this fault produces. And in a first step, you would always look out for the harmonic set, harmonic family of those 10 harmonic bands in violation. And in a second step again, it's the amplitudes that will make for a reliable detection. And this really concludes the fundamentals on rolling element bearings. Thank you, Oliver. Quite impressive. I very much like your little example over there. Um, as I said uh, in the beginning of this uh, short tutorial, we are talking about a component that you find inside machinery. Um, how, do you, how do you detect this very specific noise coming from this specific component? When you, Given the example, you have a very large machine, it's very noisy, the process itself is very, um, maybe uh, you're driving a, a hard material, for example, when you, when you have a, a pelletizer, something like this in the, in the uh, petrochemical industry. How, how are you able to detect really and assign this very signal to this one component you're monitoring? When you have a loud overall noise that maybe fuzzy your entire signal reading. Yeah, um, that really is a challenging task for the human analyst to detect those faults. There are certain techniques applied to that um, and analyzing bearing health inside complex machinery is probably worth a separate topic to be discussed. We can do another session on say complex machinery analytics mm -hmm. where we will discuss say the techniques of high frequency enveloping, uh, the impacting of very low RPM or variable speed even those are true challenges for analysts that will be... May, may I invite you to, to give such a second tutorial? My pleasure to do so. Okay. Thank you. So the next uh, topic is already set. Oliver will return and will give us a tutorial on monitoring bearings in complex machinery.